So I was asked how I did these cloth physics in this poster I made. Rather than try and type it all out to someone, I thought I'd just make a video tutorial. So that's what this is. This method involves baking cloth physics within Blender and not Source Filmmaker. I do know that you can use other programs to bake physics into models, but I don't know any of that. All I know is Blender. I don't even know it particularly well either. But I'm going to give a pretty simple rundown of what I did. First off, let me start by saying that this method isn't very intuitive. If you know the physics engine very well in Blender, you can get some really pretty results. Uh, cloth and flags and stuff seem pretty easy for me to do, uh, but it's not dynamic in Source Filmmaker. It's all pre-baked. Oh, and I should mention that this is a pretty advanced tutorial. I'm not going to go over how to compile models or write QCs or whatever. Just some of the basic stuff. First off, let's watch this little scene I made real quick. As you can see, we have a scout having lots of fun, um, and then we have a pole. Now, this is a pretty boring scene, even though there's lighting and stuff and whatever. I want to put a flag here on this little pole. Now, the pole is just a model from Half-Life 2. I didn't make it. Uh, so, that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. We're going to make a flag and put it on the pole. So, right real quick, we're going to hop into Blender. Um, I'm going to make a little reference cylinder here, just so that I can position the pole. Now, let me preface this right now. Units in Blender are puny compared to the units that are in Source Filmmaker. Especially the realistic units in Blender, the way that it calculates physics. So, when you're making physics objects in Blender, make them tiny. You want to make them really small because it'll help make the physics more realistic. Especially when you're using Blender's presets for things like mass. So. I'm going to spawn a plane, I'm going to position it onto the cylinder, and then I'm going to give it a flag shape. After that, I'm going to take the plane and I'm going to subdivide it. Now, the more subdivisions you do, the more detail there is, and the more detail, the fancier and, I guess, more detailed it'll look, essentially. However, you should keep in mind that when you detail these things a lot, you can get really, really laggy results quickly, especially when you're using subdivision. So here with just one surface, I'm going to do six subdivisions. Now if this was a multi-surface thing, I probably wouldn't do six subdivisions, but since it's just one plane, that's perfectly fine, in my opinion. Now I am seriously going to recommend that you use Blender Physics Tutorials to help you do this. I'm not going to go over it too much, but there's tons of tutorials about how to do this in Blender. Lots of very unique methods, a lot of people have developed their own methods. And if you try it for yourself for a bit, you'll develop yours as well. So now, I'm going to hop over to the Physics tab, and I'm going to add Cloth. Now from here, there's of course a lot of settings. You can change things like quality. Now look down here. You have a time frame, a start and an end frame. You can raise this, you can scrub the time. You would really need to get comfortable with this little timeline, because for physics, this is very important. Now, when we hit play on the timeline, you'll see the flag start moving now, but it's not really going to do much. It's just going to fall straight down, or if you have a floor plane, it'll fall on the floor. Uh, but we want our flag to stay on top of the pole. So, Blender has a neat little way of doing this, and it's called pinning. First, you make a vertex group, and you call it whatever you want. I called this one pin. Then you go into edit mode, you select the vertices that you don't want to be moving or swaying, and then you assign the pin vertex group to them. So now if we go back to the physics tab, we check mark pinning, and then we select the vertex group that we made. Of course, we can alter more settings. Um, but now those shouldn't move. So if we come down and we hit play, uh, not in edit mode though, and you'll see the flag start to slowly calculate. Now there's nothing going on with the flag, so right now it's just going to fall. If that's what you want, that's fine, but I like to make my flags flow. So if you come into the Add menu, you go to Force Field, and then you select Wind, you can get this little object that will simulate wind in Blender. Now, from this point, it's a lot of trial and error. Mostly trial, though. Um, essentially, you need to fiddle with things like the mass of the flag, the strength of the wind, and you'll get a ton of different results. But keep trying and keep experimenting with the settings until you get a result that you want. Here, I take a couple minutes and play around with stuff until I get something I want. And eventually, I get a result like this. Uh, the wind here is really strong, but as you can see, the flag is very uh, erect, you could say, and flowing in the wind. Now, as you can see, it's pretty slow, so 
you know, you can wait for the entire thing to cache, and you can sort of see what it looks like real time. After it caches once, you can watch the thing on loop for a while at pretty normal speed, but if you go back to frame zero and you press play again, it'll start recaching, it'll recalculate it. Now, for the sake of simplicity and keeping things intact, you can come down to the cloth cache tab in your cloth settings in physics, you can name a piece of the cloth cache, and then you can do things like bake, you can copy from the current cache and that way it'll save it. But essentially, this is how you can do it. Here, I'm just going to bake. I'm going to let it bake entirely new cache, and it'll take a bit. Now that we have our cloth animation cached, I'm just going to make a simple little material here. I'm going to call it Flag, and I'm going to use uh, Blender's Texture Paint tool to just make a simple little texture for it. There we go. That looks like a beautiful texture. Look at that. As you can see, the texture reacts fine with it. This is a simple plane, so UV mapping it was really not that hard. Uh, maybe I should fill these in. So I exported the texture from Blender, I converted it to VTF, and I wrote a little VMT for it to give it stuff like Fong. And I place it in a little folder that the QC is going to direct it to, so the texture is all set up and fine. And here we are inside of its QC file, my flag underscore QC dot QC. Now you might notice that I haven't actually made the call for the mesh yet, and that's because Blender Source Tools is going to take care of QC lines for us, and I'll show you how. So before we export this thing, we need to do one thing inside of Source Tools. Over here, you'll see something called Vertex Animation. You click the Add button, and what you see is that you have a new Vertex Animation, which you can rename if you want. And over here, you'll see a range of frames. By default, it's from 0 to 250. Uh, what we can do is if you want maybe just a section of the animation to get exported, you can just export that session. But since I'm using all 250 frames, I'm just going to leave it for this object. So now I'm going to come, I'm going to export it, and then I'm going to wait. Because this can take a long time, especially with simulations. Blender Source Tools can get a little caught up in this, and it can take a bit. So give it a bit. But here at the end, you can see that it exported two files. Flag.dmx and the vertex animation that we named .dmx. Now, you might be thinking, okay, how do we use these in the QC file? Well, Blender Source Tools takes care of that for us. We can click this Generate QC Segment button, and to our clipboard, we'll have the segment of QC to put into this file. So if we just come right in, and then we hit Control and V, you can see, there it is. These are the lines we need. And all the names are already very corresponding, so as long as everything is still in the same folder, it'll all work, it'll all compile properly. So, here I am compiling the model QC itself, and assuming your crowbar and stuff is all set up properly, we can just go right into Source Filmmaker and go find it. So, here it is. As you can see, it's already waving inside the viewport, so let's add it to the scene. Here we are in the scene, and as you can see, the flag is tiny. Look at that. Look at how tiny that thing is. But that's okay. Source Filmmaker has tools for scaling these things. So, scaling it up to a proper size and putting it on the flagpole is not a problem at all. And so, this is where it is. I think that texture is a bit overkill. I'm gonna edit that. Ah, there we go. Much better. Let's just reposition this real quick. Everything's looking good. So, in order to get to our animation, we can go and we can actually import it as a sequence. And look at that. There it is, waving about in the sequence. So, we can just open that. And there we go. Our flag will now be waving in Source Filmmaker. Now, if you take a closer inspection at your model, you'll notice that it has three bones by default. It has its root transform. It has the default bone. I didn't make an armature, so it gave it a default bone called flag. And it has another bone called something like vertex animation. And when you move that bone around, it starts scrolling through its various sequences. Uh, this is essentially how it animates the flag. Now, if for some reason your sequence is cut off, maybe it doesn't include the first part or the last part, you can use this bone to custom animate the sequence of the flag. Also, using offset mode in the graph editor, you can speed up or slow down your animation, increase it, decrease it, there's lots of values to play with. But in the end, here we go. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Ooh, that's beautiful. See, cloth simulation can offer some pretty neat effects. In my opinion, you can get some pretty cool stuff out of doing this. It's not very intuitive though, like I said, 
none of it is dynamic in Source Filmmaker. It's all pre-baked in Blender. If you wanted, say, the flag to be interacting with animated models, that would be a bit more difficult. You'd have to import those animations into Blender and then perform the simulations with the animations. It's pretty complicated stuff. I haven't tried any of it, but you can definitely experiment with this stuff. There's lots of possibilities. It's not just cloth simulation either. Any kind of simulation that you can do in Blender, you can get it into Source Filmmaker, except maybe like particle simulation, but I bet there's a way to do that too. But yeah, this is just a quick tutorial. Um, like I said, advanced tutorial. If you're not quite into the know of how to do QCs or import models or whatever, this might be pretty complicated. Um, so if you kind of want to know how to do this yourself, I would, and you don't really know much about models for Source Filmmaker, I would suggest starting there before going here. Or getting someone else to do it. But anyway, thanks for watching.